For the first time in 1,000 generations our sector governors will not be working solely to enrich Coruscant and the core worlds, but to advance the quality of life in the star systems that make up each sector keeping the spaceway safe, maintaining open and accessible communications, assuring that tax revenues are properly levied and allocated to improving the infrastructure. The Senate will likewise be made up of beings devoted not to their own enrichment, but to the enrichment of the worlds they represent. An excerpt from the Tarkin Doctrine as the Galactic Empire grew, Sidious moved closer to his ultimate plan of ruling the entire galaxy and unlocking the secrets of the Sith Masters who had come before him. With the near extermination of the Jedi Order and the Empire swelling in size and strength, the Emperor ultimately planned to possess the powers of the Dark Side to reshape reality itself into something of his own creation, and an omnipotent Empire would allow all the galaxy's inhabitants to be held in his dark embrace. As most planets were ecologically devastated, rampant industrialization and mass production eroded local culture and ecological health. People saw their children drafted into imperial service, while corrupt governors and magistrates often exploited local populations on worlds such as Jalukan, Devaran and Tanjanim. Parades, obligatory attendance at patriotic functions and the erection of barracks and garrisons on various worlds across the galaxy became the norm. Only a year after its founding, the Empire had already begun to enforce itself in the Outer Rim. Worlds that did not fall to the Empire's quick expansion, which installed an oppressive imperial presence instead of simple bases, became homes to crime lords. In its effort to establish itself in the Outer Rim, in addition to using fear, the Empire withheld food to make populations endure hunger. While the Empire turned a blind eye to various abuses, it still maintained a policy of zero corruption and maintained its high standards of conduct, resulting in numerous Imperial Security Bureau, ISB, officials actively hunting down corrupt and negligent officials, even resulting in investigations by Lord Vader himself. Despite this, many citizens were content with the geopolitical situation in the galaxy, believing that strict measures were necessary to maintain order and stability after the destructive Clone Wars. Many also believed that the Empire, while not the best, was better than anarchy and chaos. While many tolerated and even supported the Empire, many others continued to hold separatist tendencies and even exuded hostility, with those who fought in the Clone Wars seeing the transformation of the Empire from a source for order into a brutal bully in a quest for control. Nevertheless, overt resistance was crushed by the Imperial military. During this so-called Age of the Empire, Worlds such as Naboo underwent rampant beautification projects in an effort to produce idealized versions of life in the Empire as a whole, with the state-sponsored HoloNet continually citing new building projects, successful trade negotiations, and endless economic prosperity. Many supported the growing view of the Empire as a nearly invincible force. Despite its seemingly endless expansion, such as on Rada, where Imperial forces arrived to harvest food, which destroyed the quality of the moon's soil and led to a growing oppression. This angered the people of Rada to the point where they staged an uprising after weeks of planning, with the help of ex-Padawan Ahsoka Tano and the forces of Imperial Senator Bail Organa in secret. A major turning point against the Empire's advance into the Outer Rim occurred in 11 BBY, with Imperial forces commanded by Captain Ray Sloan engaging in a small skirmish in the vital Inner Rim system of Gorse. This event saw the meeting of later rebel Hera Syndulla and Jedi survivor Kanan Jarrus, who were confronting efficiency expert Count Denetrius Vidian and his aggressive methods of extracting thorolide, a vital component in the construction of turbolaser batteries and thus essential for the expansion of the Imperial fleet. The Gorse conflict ultimately ended with the transferring of local thorolide mining operations to Imperial-aligned Baron Lero Danthi while Sundula and Jarrus departed on the heavily modified VCX-100 light freighter Ghost, and would become essential to the eventual formation of the Rebel Alliance. Meanwhile, more and more worlds within the Empire began to realize its true intentions, after various massacres on Kashyyyk and increasingly brutal tactics, such as the Empire committing genocide on the Lassat homeworld of Lassen, a growing number of citizens of the galaxy began to rebel against Imperial Dominion. At least nine years after the proclamation of the New Order, the Corellian resistance fought the Empire from its headquarters on the planet Corellia. The Empire would also end the independence of many galactic, sector and planetary governments in its early conquests. 